Good evening, and welcome to another edition of Ken Boxer Live. I'm your host, Ken Boxer. We have one of the most exciting shows in store for you tonight. With us this evening is the extremely talented and one of the most hardworking entertainers in show business. We have with us writer, director, actor, magician, entrepreneur, and the creator and owner of the world famous Magic Castle in Hollywood. Our guest this half hour is the performer Daily Variety has called one of the top magicians of all time. Our guest has even had the distinguished <laughs> honor of having the ver his very own star on the Hollywood Boulevard Walk of Fame. My God, it's with great pleasure and delight to have with us the magic man himself, Mr. Milt Larson. Thank you. I'd, I'd like to be somebody like me myself after a, that kind of a build-up. I am weeks. so happy you're here. I mean, <laughs> well, I've you. wanted you on this show for so long. Well, and it's a pleasure. I wanted to meet you for so long, and you're here. Well, you know, you it's, just came down the hill to say hello. Well, yeah. you've been in Santa Barbara for a while. You live here. Yeah, so since uh, the mid-'70s. Yeah. And uh, I love Santa Barbara. It is... Uh, you know, for the greatest place in the world. Well, we enjoy having you come and appear on the show. And, you know, I know you've been asked every question under the sun, yes. but I've, you know, I'm, hopefully I'm going to ask you some questions you haven't heard before, but... I will give you, know, you my answer, which may or may not be true. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Um, you know, in terms of magic, is there anything, I mean, you've been in the business now, uh, how many years now? Over 60? Well, basically, uh, about 80 years. Not exactly. In the, well, I was born in a magic trunk, okay. so uh, Your family I, was involved. I've been in magic all my life, and that's about 82 years. 82 years of magic. So tell us, though, is there anything in, in, in the genre that still surprises you? Do you know every trick out I there? I got to tell you again, everything in magic surprises me. And I've, uh, I've, I've, I've been in magic all my life. Uh, at one point, we owned a magic company, a store, and then I've produced magic shows and television specials. And, and I make it a point to, I never go backstage in one of the shows that we do, unless the theater is burning down or something. I might go back then. But, I, I will never look at a magician's props to see how it's done. I want to be surprised. I want to be fooled. And magicians at the Magic Castle fool me all the time. They're, you know, they're doing it. I could tell you probably the method they might be using because I know there are certain things that they have to do. But on the other hand, when they do something and it completely, I have no idea where it's coming from. And they change things all the time. It's, that's what's wonderful about magic. It is always new and always different. And it, uh, you know, uh, people sometimes say, oh, I'm trying to figure out how that works. Well, forget figuring out how it works. Just be entertained by it. You, Have a good time. You yourself, you know? though, this person in magic, you don't even want to know how some magicians do their act? I really couldn't care less how they do <laughs> really? it. Because uh, there again, it, it's, you know, let's say a big illusionist, uh, they have you know, big box tricks and everything, or floating ladies and everything. I don't want to know exactly how that works. I know about 20 methods that they might be using, uh, but uh, I'd rather think that they have a big tank of helium and they blow up somebody by in their ear. I don't know. I but don't care. Magicians, though, we, you know, I, you, I remember growing up, I always thought of them being as the, you know, the, the with the hats and you know, with the rabbits and they're quite old and they're something about them. There's <laughs> evil looking, yeah. you know, I remember the old Blackstone had oh, that yeah. look. Oh well, yeah, he was you know? a real evil looking guy. But, uh, <laughs> you know, in the old time magician, of course, was uh, the white tie and tails and, and typical magician. It was, uh, we were honoring Cardini. He was the first uh, suave uh, card manipulator person. And, and Dante, the magician, was probably my favorite magician I ever saw. And that goes back, he was a big headliner in magic in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, and 50s. But uh, uh, he looked like a magician, and he acted like a magician, he sounded like a magician. He, he had the white goatee sure. and a top hat. I mean, he just looked like a magician. And today, you know, a fellow by the name of Doug Henning, you probably remember him. Sure. And, uh, he kind of broke the mold back in the uh, early 70s of uh, 
all the magicians were typical magicians. They, maybe they had oriental costumes or fezzes or something, but here's, uh, Doug Henning came out and he looked like kind of a Bugs Bunny in a jumpsuit. I mean, he, he was just totally a non-magician and he did some wonderful tricks. He had his own television special, which got enormous ratings. And all of a sudden, magician said, oh, I don't have to wear tails, I'd say. And that was really the beginning of a new era of magic, well, and thanks to him. You said that Henning wasn't quite the mag magician, magicians. Um, uh, well, he, he was one of the best magicians I've ever seen. Oh. But the image. The image, okay. That, that he, he was a, a different kind of, a very active. He, he was kind of like uh, almost, a, uh, I don't know what you'd say, maybe a cartoon magician, because uh, he always, uh, he, he, it was always like he was amazing himself. You know, as he's doing these absolutely miraculous tricks, it, it would always, oh gosh, how did I do that? You know, Can that, that, anybody uh, be a magician? Uh, or or is, is there, obviously there's talent, but I mean, if you study it enough, I think can you, you be just a, answered your own question, because uh, anybody can be a singer, okay? You give them a lead sheet, a piece of music. It's got a bunch of tadpoles on telephone wires on there, and uh, the music's there. And then you open your mouth, and what comes out? Now you give that same piece of paper to maybe a Frank Sinatra, and all of a sudden it's it's, it's brilliant. And you, I said you asked you, it's called talent. And a, a great magician is just simply a great entertainer. And if a magician doesn't entertain, they got to get out of the business because people come to be entertained by magic. They, they, they're not there to see how it works or And it's it not is. just entertainment, but I mean, in magic, magicians now also have to cross over to, I mean, I think of Penn and Teller, where oh, they're yeah. doing um, comedy. Well, you know, Penn and Teller and, are brilliant. And dance and, uh, routines. And you know, Penn and Teller were billed as the bad boys of magic, and and in their earlier thing, they, they spent a great deal of time uh, really knocking the magic castle, and, and, uh, and uh, they're our best friends. I mean, uh, now you're and they friend. always have been, but, but that's their, their act was kind of putting down the magicians. And then when you see their show in Vegas, uh, it's one of the best magic shows ever, and they sneak up on you because all of a sudden they're, they're t maybe telling you how to do a trick and they realize that they just fooled the hell out of you. I know, you know I mean, it's I know. A, I've seen their act, it's amazing. But yeah. I also got to see a little bit of some of the clips you brought with you on your talent as oh, a magician my, on stage. My at, main talent, yeah. At the Magic <laughs> Castle. Well, actually this is, I, I brought these along with me because uh, I'm a, a long time uh, member of the theatrical unions, and, and uh, I've been on many, many, many films and things as an actor. And my main acting job is you never see me uh, because uh, they call it a, a background or a, a back shot. And, uh, so I would be uh, the back of a, of an actor who is supposedly yanking a tablecloth out from under a bunch of dishes. And uh, it's the old party trick. And for some reason, I was taught that by a juggler in my early age, and I remembered it. And, and uh, so uh, I brought uh, just a real some, quick little clip. So let's watch that. that right now. Okay, if that's okay. okay with you, it's okay with me. All right, Milt Larson, let's watch. My old tablecloth trick. Oh, good grief. I want to see it. That's a sweetheart. I'll go, Arthur. No, no, please, these are our best dishes. You've broken all the others. It's been in Darren's family for generations. It belonged to his mother, his grandmother, Who his great... hand-me-downs? So at any rate, the other way that, that you uh, 
you know, you, you get big laughs with these with these people. Is you go to a really nice party and you got all the Havilland china and the Bavarian crystal, and it's all set up on a big table. And you say, did you ever see the thing where the guy yanks the old tablecloth out from underneath the stuff? And they say, no, we haven't seen that. And uh, so, and these are incidentally, these are just pieces of stuff. I don't fool around with this. These are just fun things. So. Uh, there are no strings, no trapdoors, no talent. <laughs> uh, and so I'd, I would like to attempt this tonight. Now, I, I tried this earlier in the week, and they asked me to wait till Sunday to do it again. <laughs> and uh, I bet you folks are happy that you sat real close to the stage, right? Anyway, I'm going to try it now. I detect that the stage is all cleaned up, and there is no need to. One, two, Three and a half weeks ago, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now we'll stop fooling around. One, two. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Milt Larson, everybody. <laughs> Master no, I've, I've been, uh, I've been, uh, I've had furry gloves on, be animated. Yankers of tablecloth standing in a pit. I've done it all, but I love to. You know, I, I, uh, it's not difficult to do. The main, the main thing about tablecloth yanking is you have to have a great deal of confidence. You have to really believe that because there's nothing phony about it. Well, how long did it take you to learn that act? To learn the the skill, the art of. Well, as I say, a, ju a juggler taught me base the rudimentary thing and. And uh, it's 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 very simple, but you could uh, like uh, brought this a lot. There's just uh, this is a couple oh. of cups and glasses and your Wait, pencil this is cup my and this special stuff. microphone and your special <laughs> microphone. Yeah, you know it's difficult to do it on a round table, uh, but the, the one you saw with uh, mm -hmm. uh, it was a picture called Dunstan checks in, and that was a big banquet table when it was round and it was a double tablecloth. It's very difficult to do because a smooth tablecloth is easier than a double would, table. Would you need also a sturdy table? Oh yeah. So yeah. I should hold on to this table. If you, uh, this I mean, is, are you going to do something here with uh, this? No, I'm just going to yank this tablecloth. Oh off my God! And <laughs> let's, get the broom. Let's see. A drum roll. Yes. Yeah, start the car. Let's see. One, two, and oh my God! Now, how the hell do you do that? Well, seriously, you could have the whole table loaded. When I do sometimes with the act, I take the table, have a whole setting, and put a chair on top. Then I'll put a tray on top of the chair, and you know, it's you could do it. You know, do this, do that. Take a piece of paper, I mean, and it's just old physics. I, I, but you have to have confidence. I was doing this. It was on oh a God. Florence Henderson talk show at one point, and, and I was doing it. And I'm the expert, right? So uh, I get right up to it, and we thought it'd be funny to have two other people with table setups exactly the same as mine. They could pick the ones that they wanted, not phoning it up at all. And so uh, we had three. Uh, I was one of the people, and, they were there, and I was the expert. So the time came, and I the, one of her contestants did it, and boom! And it, Dishes flying all over the place. That the next one did it and did it. And I, hey, that's pretty good. And so, <laughs> and so Florence said, okay, Mel, let's see how you do it. And I did it and missed. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so the expert screwed up, yeah. and the, the non expert did it, and you know, that's the luck of the draw. So you actually but, can do a pulling of the tablecloth with layered glassware, you know, cup, saucer, cup, saucer, and that's all. You, uh, you know, I, it's a wonderful concept, but I don't know it's about that. I've never tried that, and I don't think I will. <laughs> Is there a, any kind of Guinness World Record on that? On how many um, plates uh, or dishes? I or don't know. You, know, you, you go to YouTube, and I know find you, out. you do. You're on it. You might as well go there. <laughs> but uh, uh, there's some very funny ones on there. But, one with a guy with a motorcycle and and they pull a huge table off with the motorcycle pulling the table and and there's another one where a kid's doing it and it totally fails and the whole thing fails. I love this stuff. Do you think TV is a good medium for magic? 
Or is it, oh, sure. is it best to yeah. be in the audience of a, you know, especially in the Magic House where you're just so close, it's so intimate. Well, the castle was built on intimate magic. Now, now uh, 50 years after, which, open. by the way, congratulations. Yeah. 50 oh, years yep. anniversary. Yep. 50 years. Ladies and gentlemen, 50 years <laughs> Magic Castle. Well, despite my youthful appearance. <laughs> no, it's, uh, uh, I was pretty young when I started. But I, anyway. I wish I had your energy, even today. <laughs> oh, well. I, I, it, I'm it, appreciative of seeing this energy that you have. Well, You're you, 82 years young. I don't know if our audience right. knows that. Well, they say life begins at 85. I'm just hoping. Okay. But anyway, uh, but the the whole point about uh, uh, doing any magic or anything else is uh, you know confidence, hopefully showmanship and everything else. So that's where you go. You said you started. Uh, you've been in a, a, a magician's family. Your family was in. Ma there were yeah, my mother, father, and uh, my brother were all the F Larson family of magicians, and uh, during the late thirties and oh. uh, we. Played resort hotels. My dad had a, it was during the Depression, the Great Depression. I don't know why they call it a Great Depression. It didn't sound too good to me, but it's a, uh, the, uh, you know, everybody's in bread lines and stuff. And my dad uh, started billing our show as the Larson family, uh, the cultural uh, background of magic. And he built it through a lecture bureau. Well, people, the rich people still had money and they were at these resort hotels. So I grew up in these, Gorgeous resort hotels, uh, uh, mainly on the West Coast, but I, I never knew there was a right-hand side of the menu. You just uh, <laughs> order stuff, wanted. and, and uh, I always thought everybody lived in uh, houses with huge chandeliers and gold leaf and everything. I've, I've always said I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth, but it just hadn't, wasn't ours. You know, <laughs> it, it was a rental spoon. Why do you think, though, people enjoy magic so much? Is it the illusion, the entertainment? What is it? Well, I, th I think basically, and you mentioned about magic on television. Uh, if you see movies today of, in the old days when the 100 Indians ran up the hill to, to uh, save the, the world, there were 100 extras on the movie lot. Today they have, probably have four and a whole bunch of computers and optics of you can have 20,000 people coming over the hill and stuff. So. Uh, magic on television, in the early days of television, people refused to really believe magic was very good on television because it took a fellow by the name of Mark Wilson, who's still around, he's on our board of directors at the castle, and he had a show called The Magic Land of Alakazam. And a wonderful show, it was a kid's show, on, but it was the first magician on CBS national television. And all of a sudden they said, well, yeah, that stuff looks pretty good. Because the, the trick in watching things on television is uh, a camera, if you cut away, if you go from here to there to there to there, in the time that you cut away, you could put an elephant in a box and do it. So the trick is either to have somebody like you watching me. So if I do something now, you know that we're not cutting Well, wait away, a second. Let know. me stop you right there. Let's see. You brought with you some well, magic. Well, yeah, let me do one thing here. I, I okay. did. Now, I'm, I really wanted to do a trick for you today, and I'm... I'm, I'm get this out of your way. Thank you. I'll trick this on the way out. <laughs> and, uh, Serious. No, I, I wanted to do a thing because this is a, a really interesting trick, and uh, uh, I've seen magicians do this, and I want to do it, but I went down to the local magic store. The Larson brothers down here have a magic store. That's true. There's a They're Larson not brother. related, but it's okay. a magic shop. I didn't know. And at any rate, uh, you should... they, do they know who you are when they? You know? No, unfortunately, they do, but they okay. don't. They don't give me a discount. <laughs> anyway, but a uh, uh, magician would show one, two, three, four, five, six cards, and then the magician would throw away one, two, three of the cards littering up the stage as he does. Then, magician would say, well, wait a minute, I still have one, two, three, four, five, six cards left. So I said, well, that's the very trick that I want to show Ken mm -hmm. on his TV show. Uh, that's a trick where the magician takes one, two, three, four, five, six, six cards. cards. I can't even count. 
and then he throws away one, two, three of the cards, and he still has one, two, three, four, five, six cards. <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah, but yeah. but uh, uh, the guy at the magic shop, Mr. Larson, he said, uh, do you mean that trick where the magician starts out with one, two, three, four, five, six cards, then he throws away oh, one, two, three cards, and he still has one, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six cards left. And I said, that is exactly the trick I want. And he said, well, unfortunately, I sold the last one yesterday, and so I can't show it to you today. I'm sorry you about that. You are less than three feet away from me, and I didn't see anything how you did that. I didn't see it myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And, you know, we don't have a lot of time, but I, in this few minutes, you have a few more th things. Up I've, 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 got to, I've, I've got to tell you, I do one thing that the uh, magicians of the castle are very envious of what I do because they are so good. We have the world's top magicians, and they, they are brilliant. And I do one simple trick, and that is that you don't realize that when we started talking, when I first met you, uh, I put a card in your mind. A card in your mind is there that I put there. Now you have okay. to clear your mind, and I can see you've done that many times. I will do that. But I'll do that right now the, for you. Your mind is clear, and I want to tell you the card in your mind is not an ace because people say, well, everybody will say the ace of diamonds, the ace of clubs. It's true. Pick a card, ace of clubs. I'm not doing it. Got 48 left. I think that's good math. Whatever it is. Anyway, do uh, you have a card in your mind? Okay. Okay, now keep that card there because I'm not going to fool around with this thing. I do. I'm going to show this to you and to the camera. There's a card. In Can this. I see this card? This not one? yet. Okay. Keep your... Oh, okay. Uh, this is my business card. Uh -huh. There's nothing else in a little wallet. Okay. If this card... Okay. Is the card that I have put in your mind, that would be a pretty good trick because you have I not... Be, I have not told not you. not pre-prepared or anything. Right. And if that's the card, I will be honest what with you. What is the card you're thinking about? Queen of Diamonds. The Queen of Diamonds. Yes. Start the car. Oh, well. <laughs> Queen of Diamonds. Queen of Diamonds. You, I'm not sure. I just want to make sure that people know I'm not switching any cards or anything. Show it to yourself and that the Queen of Diamonds. Sorry, I don't do card tricks. Sorry about that. <laughs> Isn't that stupid? <laughs> no. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I got to tell you, that has gotten me from economy to first class <laughs> on many an airplane. So, <laughs> okay. That's my you, silly that's, business card. You can have that. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'll yeah. put it in my... <laughs> My coat pocket. That's great. So anyhow, but that, that's a cool rule. It is. There. And what, um, you have uh, one more, yes? I, I, yeah, I do I, have one I more. I love these tricks. And uh, let's see if I can find it. And this, this is a trick that uses a silk handkerchief. Do, let's uh, see if we get we wait, have the camera on that. We're going to make sure. Uh, silk handkerchief. There we go. Just, uh, but uh, I usually use a, uh, a different silk. Uh, wow. Uh, now, this, this isn't the different silk I normally use. I'm sorry, I get a little confused in my old age. Uh, somewhere I've got a different silk. It's in one of these pockets. Let's see. Let's uh, see. Different silk. Ah, we here it is. Here it is. Background music for looking for pockets. Okay. That, it got tangled oh, up in a micro. Okay. Anyway. There's another What's that? Handkerchief. Yeah, okay, okay, fine. It's falling okay. apart on me here. Other than that. Uh, that sound effects. Let's see what goes, we're doing. Goes with the act. Okay. Always just, a, once a I magician, just always this. a magician. Oh, you've got Magic Castle. There we go. Anyway, here's what I'm going to do. The uh, magicians of Orient particularly think that these things have minds of their own. A bunch of little circworms right there. So, and if you want to tie it into a knot, for instance, and it doesn't want to be tied into a knot, uh, no matter what you do, you couldn't tie it. Uh, it just wouldn't happen. <laughs> so, but you great. can hypnotize them. <laughs> and then you can sneak up on these little devils. Mm -hmm. And at that point, 
you can tie it into a knot. Mm -hmm. But the trouble is that sooner or later, they will awaken. <laughs> also, the, so my wannabe tied in a knot. Ladies and gentlemen, I am just a few feet from him here, and I'm not seeing it. It's tie it thing. Isn't that weird? Excellent, excellent. We, we work in a weird world. Yeah, well, hey, I... would be better if I didn't tangle everything let up Let me tell you here. something. I have this book. Oh, this isn't that book, a good book? The I Magical like book. Journey, The First 30,000 Days. You got it. Let us know, what is this book all about? It is my autobiography. I've, I've written, this is the third book I've written, basically on other things. But the first 30,000 days is my age time, uh, 365 days, because I was born in a, in a magic family. And it's basically all the things I've, you know, done magic. I've produced shows and uh, TV, of course, writing Truth or Consequences, that's all in there. And uh, 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 mainly every, everything in there, part of the reason is my magical journey, is I, I liken it all to be on a, a train, and the train keeps going on to sidings. And mm -hmm. so magic is the main track. But then I do a thing like I had a music hall in Santa Monica, the Mayfair Music Hall, British Music Hall. That was a siding. Then I went over there and did Caesar's Magical Empire. That was a siding. So I, I just have a good on, time doing We're on track stuff. with you. We're so <laughs> delighted that you came. Oh, thank you. We we'll love having you here. You'll come back when you're doing the It's Magic I'll at the LaBarrel. I'll be back any time I'm doing a show. I'll be on your doorstep hoping right. you'll plug us. <laughs> well, thank you so much, and we'll plug you all the time. Oh, oh thank you, Ken. Thank this has you. been a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you here. And that's, that's it for another edition of Ken Boxer Live. You know, we don't want you to leave just yet. Stay with us on KenBoxerLive.com and catch the very latest Ken Boxer Live news. So if you've missed any of our past shows, just go to KenBoxerLive.com. It's that simple. That's definitely where you'd want to be. So for my guest, Milt Larson, and for my director, Nick Ferretti, and for my entire hardworking crew, I'm Ken Boxer saying we'll see you next week on Ken Boxer Live. Good night, everybody.